Welcome to the presentation of the paper Submethod Partial Behavioral Reflection with Reflectivity Looking Back on 10 Years of Use. The paper focuses mainly on the 10 years of use aspect. For the 15 minute presentation, we decided to instead present reflectivity in a practical way. We will show some demos in the live system with the goal of you understanding what this is all about. For the 10 years of use aspect, we refer to the paper. The context of this work is reflection in object-oriented systems. A reflective system is a system that contains a model of itself that is, that is causally connected. If you change the model, you change the system. If you would change the system, the model would re reflect that change. In object-oriented languages, this means that the system contains an object oriented model of itself. If you think about object oriented languages, the first thing that comes into mind is structure. It is very natural to have classes, methods, or packages being represented by objects. But another reflective aspect is behavior. That means runtime aspects. These are things like variable access, message sending, or how the uh, control flow is modeled. What is clear is that general purpose languages are often not fully reflective because it is very difficult to have everything represented without either having problems with memory or with speed. What is reflectivity? Reflectivity is the combination of sub-method reflection, the structural part, and partial behavior reflection. These are done to improve both structural and behavior reflection in an object-oriented language. With sub-method reflection, we extended structural reflection to cover method structure. With partial behavior reflection, we implement behavior reflection as annotations on top of this structure. The first part of reflectivity is sub-method reflection. What we did here is that we extended the structural model of an object-oriented language to take into account not only classes and methods and packages, but in addition, model the contents of a method as a reflective entity. We do this by using the AST and extending it to be a reflective model of, of the method. This is done by making sure that the AST is causally connected. When you change the AST, the method is recompiled, and thus the execution will take the change into account. Partial behavioral reflection is the second part of reflectivity. Here, metalinks bind operations to meta objects. Metalinks are already known from a system called Reflex, which has been published for the first time at Uppsala 2003. But in reflectivity, metalinks are annotations on the submethod structure, that is on the AST, and they are fully dynamic. We can add and remove links at runtime without any problem. Metalinks are objects. They annotate one or more AST nodes and describe a message to be sent to a meta object. As such, the metalink needs to know which meta object it should point to, which methods to call there, if it should be called before, after, or instead the original operation, which arguments to pass. For arguments, we have to support reifications. For example, we need to be able to hand over the receiver and the arguments of a message sent, or the name of a variable. Another thing that the metalink can define is a condition. The condition allows the metalink to be turned on and off at runtime without having to uninstall it. With this information, we can already play with our first simple link. Here we are actually in the firewall system, so it's running with what would have been the slide as a picture. What we will do is we define a metalink. So first we say we have a variable and we assign metalink new which means we make a new instance of Metalink, and then we set all these parameters that we need to make a Metalink useful. For one, this is the meta object itself. In this case, we 
pass a class as a meta object. As classes are objects, we can just use them as any other object in the system. The selector that we want to call on the meta object is once, and the control is that we want to do it before. If we evaluate this piece of code, we will create a new object that is stored in a variable link. And if we inspect this variable, we see that we defined a meta link with all the information that we set. So we want to have it once, before, and the meta object is hot. If we want to now use this meta object, we need to annotate the sub method structure using this link. One example that we can do is we can set it on the sin method in the number hierarchy. For that, we can get the sin method, which is this expression. So if we inspect it, we would get the method. To get the AST, the sub message structure, we, we ask for the AST, which then looks like this. So we have here a nice tree, which maps to code, as we can see. And there we can set the link by just calling link. If we before we do this, we, we can execute this method and it would just return a number. As soon as we now set the link and execute this again, we will see that we end up in the debugger because that is what the meta object actually does. The meta object is the help class which implements breakpoints. If we want to not end up in the breakpoint, we can say link uninstalled, and after that it works again. This is a very simple example, and on the right in the picture, we can see how this actually, uh, how it maps to the picture that we always saw. We have, in one case, we have the source code, the ASD, which is down there, and we have the meta link defined, as we saw, with the meta object, with the selector and control. Our second demo will be a bit more complex. What we will do is we will build a meta object protocol for state access. In small talk, instance variables are accessed via bytecode in the method. There is no way from the language side to change semantics of variables. What you have to do is you have to implement access or methods if you want to do that. But with reflectivity, we can actually use meta links to create a real meta object protocol where every read of a variable actually is a message sent to the class with a method that implements the read of the variable. For doing this, we first define a link that we see here. Here, the link actually sets as its meta object, not a fixed object, but we use the feature of reflectivity that we can actually ask any kind of uh, reification that is defined to play the role of a meta object. In this case, we, we tell the, the link, your meta object will be the class that you are installed in. That means if we install this link into different classes, the meta object will be two different objects depending on where, where the link is installed. The selector will be, in this case, read variable in. This is the method that we will call on the meta object, that means the class. The control is instead, which means that it will not do it in addition to the bytecode, but it will replace the bytecode of instance variable read. And we define two arguments to be passed to the um, method of the meta object. These are again reifications. And the reification that we want to pass for one is the variable that this read is done on, so the meta object of the variable. And we want to pass over the instance at runtime where the link is activated. This, with this information, we have enough information to actually do the message, uh, to do the instance level read ourselves in, in the meta object. To install it, we need to get somehow all, all LST nodes that read the variable. The simplest way of doing that is to actually use our um, variable meta objects. So we can ask our class, uh, in this case, our demo class, my class, for all its instance variable. If we inspect that, we see it has one, my var, which is an object which actually defines this variable. So it knows its name, it knows its class, it knows implementation details like the index. 
um, and it knows it's using methods and it knows the AFC nodes. And those we can actually get by calling read nodes. And if we do this, we get a collection of just one IFC node, which as we can for the source code, it nicely shows as it do this read. So if we use this collection and iterate over it with one entrance and set the link, we should activate the link for all uh, these reads. And to show that this is true, we can actually make an instance and call our accessor. And if we do that, we end up in the debugger because this is what we actually did on the meta object. For a real use case, this would of course not be just going to the debugger, but it would use the information that we have here, the variable object that got passed over and the instance of my class to implement the variable access in the small talk level instead of the VM level. Our third demo focuses on the dynamic aspect of MetaLinks. It is possible to actually install and deinstall MetaLinks at runtime. As an example, we made a small counter which actually counts um, or records messages executed. But it does that not by us installing the MetaLink on all of these methods, but we just install it on the first one and it will then install itself just before execution in the next method. We can show that this works. So we make an instance. So now we have a counter which has a MetaLink defined um, and it has an already visited instance variable where it will record. And then we can actually uh, install it on the first method, call this method, return something, and then we can check um, how many methods did it visit, and it had visited three. And if we look in our counter, we see that it indeed uh, went for, to first, second, and third. And if we look at our demo, this is actually what we would expect because first call second, second call third, third call something else. But our meta counter made sure to not spread our link like a virus over the whole system, but it made sure that it stopped by checking that we are in my package so that, the, that our link does not get spread over the whole system. How do we actually do this? So the install on method takes all send nodes of, of, the, of, the, of the AST and installs the link. And the link um, takes as a meta object the, the counter, says that the spread on for from method is the method that we want to call on it with selector receiver and method. And this method first makes sure that we did not yet visit the, the method, then it adds, adds it to the visited method. And then it makes sure that we don't escape our package. Then we make the lookup of the selector just the same as the VM will do, which means we will find the method that or will be executed. And this means that we can now install ourselves there. This happens at runtime. And so that means that this link installs itself on just the method that will be ex executed next and then nothing else. So we have seen some of the properties of reflectivity. For one, we have quite simple non-intrusive instrumentation. That means the source code is not um, changed. It supports cross-cutting. So that means we can install one meta link on many operations in many classes. It is partial. For one, we can select where a meta link is installed. We can uh, turn it on and off by either defining a condition or by dynamic uninstrumentation by just removing the link at runtime. And we have selective verification. So that means that we do not have to slow down execution to verify information that we don't need at the meta level. Then we can control the link with before, after, and instead. What we did not show in, in the demos was that um, we can make meta links in a way that they will not end up in endless recursion. So that means that the meta link itself doesn't trigger itself. And we have support for object centric meta links. That is, meta links are only active for one object and not for all objects of that class where it's installed. These properties have led 
to reflectivity being useful for many projects. We looked at the publications and over the last 10 years, we had 21 papers that use reflectivity in one form or the other. We show on this slide an overview of the kinds of things that people did. For example, people implemented breakpoints or used it in debugging in other ways. Yeah, it's work on on-demand announcements, on dynamic synchronization, post-mortem analysis, runtime evolution, profiling, IDE interactions, and without a picture, uh, dynamic aspects was a huge topic at the beginning of the research. For details of these publications, and especially on which of the features each of them actually needed, we refer to the paper. It has an extensive analysis of which features were useful for the different experiments. Even after using reflectivity now for quite some time, there's of course always something to do in the future. One thing that we want to improve is the submethod model. For now, we use a more or less conventional AST. We would like to explore if we can find a way of improving memory efficiency. Another topic is threat safety. This is actually not directly related to reflectivity only. It's in general that structural reflection in the system is not threat safe. It would be interesting to explore how to change this. Another thing that we need to do is we need to integrate it with the first class variables that we see in file 9. We want to extend it to be able to, so that we can put meta links directly on the variables, not only on AST nodes. And last but not least, we are looking into improving hot code update. It's already very dynamic, but in a small talk tradition, then it's only the next method that sees a meta link. We already explored uh, on stack replacement to make this a bit more practical for methods that actually are long running. If you are interested, contributions are very welcome. Reflectivity is part of FARO since a couple of releases, and on GitHub you can find the latest version.